It's now been a little while since the iPhone 15 Pro was released. And now that we're past all of the initial hype over the new features, it's time to really drill down into the USB-C functionality because what are people actually using it for? And sort of what benefits does it actually bring to the iPhone as a whole? And that is what I wanna focus on in this video, USB-C on the iPhone 15 Pro. And not only that, but going forward into the future, in future versions of the iPhone. And if you're an Android fanboy, I know, you guys have had it for years now, but hey, sometimes as an iPhone owner, you've really got to take what you can get. So without further ado, let's dive into USB-C on the iPhone 15 Pro in more detail. Okay, so let's start with the humble USB-C hub. Now, you probably already have one of these. I know for me personally, I have a couple laying around the house and they've been used for years on laptops, but now the functionality is actually very similar on an iPhone. And obviously this unlocks a pretty impressive range of functions. So for example, just like your laptop, you can now charge, plug in an SD card and get a wired ethernet connection, for example. Yes, a wired ethernet connection to an iPhone. I know it sounds strange, who would want to do that? But just let me explain it and it'll actually make sense. So the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max has Wi-Fi 6E already, but if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6E capable router or access point, you're gonna be limited to either Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 5 speeds. Now, when I plug in an ethernet cable into my iPhone 15 Pro via an adapter or a hub, you can actually see an ethernet symbol appear in the dynamic island. Now, the reason that being able to connect directly to your network via an ethernet cable is important is if you have crappy Wi-Fi, for example, you're just not gonna get very good Wi-Fi speeds and you're gonna get much, much faster speeds and more bandwidth connecting with an ethernet cable. Not to mention on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, you're actually gonna get much faster speeds than the previous Lightning protocol, which just means you'll be able to transfer more data quicker. Likewise, if you need to download a huge app onto the phone or if you've just bought a new phone and you've got hundreds of gigabytes of iCloud photos and videos or iCloud backups, for example, that you need to pull from the cloud onto your device. It's just gonna be quicker using an ethernet cable rather than Wi-Fi in most situations. Again, depending on how fast your Wi-Fi network is. Now, this USB-C functionality also allows you to output to an external monitor and receive charging at the same time. So for example, if you have a USB-C monitor with power delivery like I have, you can plug an iPhone in, get power, and output onto that screen. Now, granted the experience isn't that great. I mean, you're basically just getting a low resolution mirror of exactly what's happening on your iPhone screen. But if you connect an Xbox or a PlayStation controller via Bluetooth to your iPhone 15 Pro, you can actually get a pretty decent gaming experience. Now it's in no way comparable to a proper dedicated gaming device like an Xbox or a PlayStation, but it's pretty cool for on the go things, right? Like if you're in a hotel room, you can hook this bad boy up to a TV. But the main thing that I'm excited about is for the future, right? Like if we can connect this now and get this kind of functionality, imagine in two or three years or five years, I mean, this thing may be a full on, fully fledged gaming console, but that's wishful thinking. It's gonna take a couple of years. So let's move on. But just quickly before that, a quick word from the sponsor for this section of the video. Meet the two-in-one hub mouse by ProtoArc. Backed by hundreds of supporters in a successful Kickstarter campaign, it's more than just a mouse. It also has a three-port hub seamlessly integrated within the mouse itself, making it a travel-friendly, all-in-one solution ideal for on-the-go professionals. The 60-watt USB-C PD interface charges your devices, USB-A 3.0 allows for speedy data transfer, and the 4K HDMI port lets you share content on bigger screens. Free up valuable ports on your MacBook or iPad, connect keyboards, headphones, hard drives, and more, all in one sleek device. Also, you can easily switch between devices with both 2.4 gigahertz USB receiver and Bluetooth connections. Whether it's your laptop, tablet, or phone, ProtoArc Hub Mouse ensures a seamless transition between devices. Plus, the ProtoArc Hub Mouse is 
is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Surface, and popular tablets, including iPads. So use the link in the description below to grab one now and use the exclusive code 25 created to get 25% off. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now you probably already know, but you can actually now charge other devices using your iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. So for example, if you have AirPods, you can charge them. Uh, you can also charge another phone. So for example, if you have an iPhone and the battery percentage is lower than the phone you're outputting from, it'll charge another phone. That also works with Android as well. For example, here's my 14 Pro. I'm just using a standard USB-C to lightning cable and it's charging from my 15 Pro. Just don't forget that the USB-C port on the 15 Pro and Pro Max is limited to four and a half watts of output. So it's not really that strong, but you know, over a couple of hours, it'll actually output a pretty decent amount of power. Okay, let's move on to external drive support. Now, USB-C has been really good for functionality and over the last couple of years, it's actually become really, really popular. It's basically the standard protocol now for connecting things. And if you actually remember back to about 2016, the MacBook was the one of the first devices to go fully USB-C. But the design of a port is one thing. What about the speed? So the iPhone 15 Pro gets USB 3 10 gigabit speeds, which is much faster than the previous Lightning protocol and much faster than the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, which although they also have USB-C, the port has been limited to USB 2 speeds, which is roughly half as fast as USB 3. Now, a theoretical maximum of up to 10 gigabit on the iPhone 15 Pro means you should be able to achieve speeds of up to around 1200 megabytes per second. That's being able to transfer roughly a single 1080p movie in about two to three seconds. In reality, it actually depends on a few things, mostly the speed of the actual device or drive that you're connecting to the iPhone. If it's a cheap, slow and crappy drive, for example, the 10 gigabit speeds on the iPhone 15 Pro won't matter because that device will never be able to achieve anywhere close to those speeds in the first place. Also, the cable you're using needs to be at least USB 3 as well. The cable Apple includes in the box is only USB 2. Now, the speeds of external drives can vary quite a lot. So SD cards, for example, anywhere from 50 megabytes per second to 300, 350 megabytes per second. And this Samsung T5 external SSD can do about 500 megabytes per second. Now, all of these speeds are nice if you're just transferring files on and off the iPhone. But what got people really excited was the ability to attach an external drive to the iPhone and be able to record ProRes in 4K60. So this is a Samsung T5 external SSD. This one's actually quite cheap. It's one terabyte. Uh, they do go up to two terabytes, I believe. Uh, they vary in price quite a lot. They're generally cheapest on Amazon because Amazon has sales all the time. Uh, so I will leave a link down below to the best price I can find if you're interested. But spending money on this is gonna be way more economical, and way more cheaper than actually upgrading your iPhone to like one terabyte storage when you purchase it from Apple. Now, if I load up the camera app on my iPhone 15 Pro, by the way, this is the 256 gigabyte version. And if I then try to record some 4K30 ProRes, I only have four minutes of recording time and I can't record 4K60 at all. But if I put in my cheap T5 one terabyte SSD, I can record a whopping 144 minutes of 4K30 or 72 minutes of 4K60 ProRes log. Or instead of the SSD, you can just pick up a cheap SD card adapter and use the same SD cards your camera already uses. Okay, let's talk audio. Now, for the last couple of years, we've been able to attach audio devices to the iPhone via the lightning port or also the older 3.5 millimeter port before Apple removed it. But check this out. So this is my Evo 4 audio interface. It's what I use to record all the voiceovers on this channel using my Sennheiser shotgun mic. Now for this audio setup to work, the audio interface needs power, obviously to turn on, but also to send a little bit of power to the actual microphone itself so it can power on and actually pick up the audio. And my Sennheiser shotgun mic works perfectly fine. I mean, I can adjust levels on the interface and if I go into the voice memos app on the iPhone, it just works straight away and I get professional quality audio 
all 100% powered by my phone. Just take a listen. So this is my studio microphone plugged directly into my iPhone 15 Pro via my Evo 4 audio interface. Sounds pretty damn good for an iPhone, right? Now, obviously you'd be better off recording all of that into a dedicated audio app, like a proper one, maybe a paid one instead of just a voice memos app, but you get my point. Now, just to clarify here, this really does depend on the specific audio interface and also the specific microphone, you know? Some interfaces may need more power than what the phone can provide, which is, again, only 4.5 watts, and some microphones will, again, just need more power. So it really just depends on the combination of equipment that you're using. But I can totally see people using the iPhone Pro to record professional quality audio now. I mean, if it's gonna work with what is a pretty professional setup that I'm using right now, uh, you know, that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility if you're out in the field at a wedding, for example, or if you're just making videos in a spare bedroom like I am, it's gonna give you some really nice sounding audio. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, there are other things that you can do, like people have said that some webcams work and, you know, there are really funky setups you can do with USB-C hubs, but to be fair, this is an iPhone. You're really, it's not a computer replacement. Uh, you're really not gonna be using it that intensely to go out and do all these crazy things with the USB-C port. But from what I've showed in this video, for me personally, I actually use all of these things and it's been really, really awesome. And I'm really excited to see the future of the iPhone. But apart from that, hopefully you enjoyed any questions down below and I'll catch you in the next one.